Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. <clears throat> I'm sure you all know the verb to star. To star is when you put a wooden spoon or a spoon of any kind in the food and you move it around to mix the ingredients in the pot. So if you're making, let's say, porridge or a soup or something delicious with liquids, you might stir it. You might even stir it uh, intensely to try to make the sauce thicker. But that's stirring. And you can hear there that the R is usually silent. So to stir up, is used also as a metaphor when you create something from nothing. Let's go through the examples to make it clearer. He likes to stir up trouble among his classmates by spreading rumors. The movie's story stirred up a lot of emotions leaving many viewers in tears. Visiting her old neighbourhood stirred up fond memories of her childhood. The politician's statement stirred up controversy on social media. The upcoming product launch has stirred up a lot of interest among tech enthusiasts. So you can hear there that it's not always negative. You can stir up interest in something. And you can also stir up good emotions as well as bad emotions. So to stir up is when something is created or is creating a sense of something getting better or getting worse. Now from today... Uh, there's a new law being introduced into Scotland and it's called the Hate Crime and Public Order Scotland Act. Now, as I've told you many times before, the UK is made up of four different nations. This one only applies to Scotland. There is already a UK law called Incitement to Hatred, which was brought in to deal with terrorism and speaking, mentioning bad things about British life and culture. But this particular one uh, is tailored, it means made specifically for, if you tailor something, you make it specifically for a thing. This particular law is catered uh, for those people who are facing discrimination and hate speech because of their age, disability, sexual orientation, uh, and being transgendered, as well as many other things. Now, the BBC are reporting that this new law isn't actually a problem itself, but the police are very worried about people's response to it. I mean, no one, no one has a problem with the law, but many people are worried that if they are investigated that their names will appear on a register or the information will be kept about them for future crimes that they may or may not commit. But in other media, opponents to this law are describing it as a catastrophe for free speech because it's saying that we aren't allowed to say anything anymore. You can't just hate. I mean, you can have a personal opinion of hatred, 
but you're not allowed to share that if it antagonizes somebody else. It's very complex, and I think part of the problem is nobody knows how this law is going to be implemented. The police are saying that they will investigate every single complaint that they receive. They've pledged to do that, which means they've promised to do that. And they're saying it will cover disability, religion, sexual orientation, age, transgender identity, and variations in sex characteristics. Um, however, unlike the other law, incitement to racial hatred, um, people must intend to stir up hatred against other groups before they can get arrested. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not really clear on where this is going. It says here, under the new law, to be found guilty of a hate crime, you must do two things. You must engage in behavior or communication that is perceived by a reasonable person to be threatening or abusive on the grounds already mentioned. That's disability, religion, age, sexual orientation, transgender, identity, etc., and the person must intend to stir up hatred on the basis of these characteristics. This law will apply to behavior and speech made both in public and in private, such as in a person's home. Um, and this is where it gets a little bit complex because this essentially means that you can't say anything which involves hatred anywhere, even if it's in your home and you're expressing an opinion. Um, yeah, so I, <laughs> I'm not sure how to react to that, to be honest. Um, it says here, uh, that many people are worried about this law, not because it's a law, but just because they're worried how the records will be kept. The police are saying they're not expecting a huge number of calls. Uh, they're not getting additional resources to deal with this. But uh, the police have also warned this could have a chilling effect on freedom of expression. Yeah, because if you think, for example, of churches, um, when they talk about sin, it's a little bit uh, hard for them, you know, now to tell you that you're a bad person because of your behavior. And that's what it's saying in this this uh, report here uh, and they're also saying that freedom of expression uh, may well become a thing of the past um, some gender critical activists like jk rowling that's the woman who wrote the harry potter novels She's known for her views on women and trans rights. Uh, she said that, uh, let's see, what she's saying here. Yeah, apparently, recently, she described a transgendered woman as a man. And then she said, if you genuinely imagine I'm going to delete posts because I've called a man a man, um, then that's not going to happen. <laughs> Those aren't her words exactly, but that's what she's saying. Um, yeah, the, mm, there's a lot of real debate here, and I'm not sure that... Uh, 
they're not stirring up hatred by their response to this. Yeah, I think part of the problem is that in Scotland particularly, we have a lot of transgendered people. Now, I don't know why we have a lot of transgendered people, but we do. It might just be that they're more vocal or noticeable because there's less people in Scotland than in England. But I think this law is being brought in to protect them more than anybody else because I think they, they're having real problems with that. I think the difficulties with these kind of things is that in the four nations, we're getting to a point where you can't express yourself really publicly or privately, it seems, in the north. But in the south, there's more room to say what you want. Um, I mean, acts like this don't trouble me, but it's how they're going to use them in the future. That's the problem. They're effectively saying that you're not allowed to hate. Now, um, one of the weirdest things about this new law, which has caused a lot of outrage, is it doesn't mention hatred towards women. So it's covering a lot of minorities, uh, including gay people, transgendered people, uh etc etc but women have been excluded and a lot of people are saying but women are one of the most abused groups in Scottish society misogyny alcoholism drugs and other things uh, mean that it's a bit of a cocktail or recipe for disaster when it comes to people being violent against women. Uh, so they've responded by saying, but women like everyone else are already protected from threatening or abusive behavior. Um, so that's, that's another thing. It says here, uh, at first glance, it might seem appealing to expand hate crime aggravators to include sex, gender, as an obvious way to increase protections for women. However, in reality, the hate crimes model was not designed to address the nature and scale of the gender-based violence and harassment women face in our society. Um, apparently, using hate crimes to address misogyny, violence against women has proven to be inadequate in other countries and could undermine more targeted efforts to address these issues. Comedians are particularly upset because they're saying that they they're not allowed to laugh at anyone for any reason anymore. And they're all planning to move to Dubai, where they're fully protected by the law and they can still enjoy entertaining English people. Yeah, one of our most famous um, comedians, Jim Davidson, he <laughs> he's someone who really didn't become popular here uh, because of his rhetoric. He, he was very famous, of course, at one point, but as Britain moved on and his jokes didn't, he very quickly got into some problems. So he ended up in Dubai entertaining people. And I think he's still over there. Um, so it says here, the police have said... Uh, that there's a wide range of scenarios where offences might take place um, and that officers have not been told to target particular situations. 
um, Elon Musk has waded in. To wade in is how we talk about someone getting involved. To wade in is usually used when you're entering a lake with boots. You know, you wade in, but you can wade into discussions as well. Uh, and he's saying, uh, under the country's new hate crime law, actors are not given a free pass to make jokes, insensitive subjects, etc. Um, and he's using that as an example of how free speech must be protected. And uh, his tweet has been seen 25 million times. Uh, but, you know, even though he's saying that, and also Joe Rogan is also criticizing Scotland, I have to say it's needed. I mean, the, there is a lot of hatred here. Uh, I don't know why, but you can pick it up. It It's something which is quite prominent. People here like to see the negative. It's part of their stoic way. They like to knock people down uh, to destroy their confidence. It's just the way they are. And I, I think these days, of course, that's not fashionable, but that's something which is very, very deep in Scottish culture. Anyway, the police have told comedians uh, the act doesn't criminalize telling a joke at all. It would only apply to behavior any reasonable person would regard as threatening or abusive with the established intention of stirring up hatred against a group. Dear. <laughs> I love the way that in English you can you can kind of get out of difficult situations by dressing up your words. Um, it's not just the Hate Crime Act that's that's been criticised, but the police campaign around it as well. Apparently, the police have been accused of stereotyping young working-class men and demonizing them. And uh, the Scottish government is saying they're already disadvantaged. They don't need the police saying that they're most likely to be creating a problem. Because the police apparently said, we know that young men aged 18 to 30 are most likely to commit hate crime. Oh, really? <laughs> I don't know where they got that from. I mean, from my point of view, and, and this is just my opinion, okay? Just in case anyone thinks that I'm establishing hate or anything. But from my point of view, I think the people most likely to create hate crimes are middle-aged women. That's what I've seen uh, around here. They can be particularly nasty, um, both publicly and privately. Um, yeah, and it goes on to say, uh, if you've been a victim of a hate crime or have witnessed one, here are the numbers for the police. It's not the only place you can report a hate crime, though. Um, third-party reporting centres have also been set up, such as libraries charities if you're not feeling comfortable going to the police libraries or charities oh interesting um and on that list if you feel that you've been uh subject to a hate crime you can also report it in other places now as well libraries charities adult shops, and also a mushroom farm. <laughs> and you can imagine that many people are laughing at that, that if you've been, if, if someone is hating you and you don't want to talk to the police about it, you can effectively go to an adult shop. Uh, an adult shop is a shop that sells adult things. I'm sure you know what I mean. 
uh, and also a mushroom farm. <laughs> I mean, I can see why they're doing it. It's just that um, these uh, places are, of course, more accessible. They're talking about Scotland here, which is uh, which has remote parts to it. So what might be a high street shop in London could easily be a farm in Scotland. But the whole thing is just a little bit bizarre. Well, I'm way over time, so I'll leave it there. I don't know what you think about that, but all a little bit strange. So there we are to stir up. Enjoy your day. See you soon. Bye.